he has a lot of empathy. Really supportive friend. A protector. Very mature. He was friendly, he was outgoing, he was positive. He's a ray of hope. My name is Rodney Derrickson. I've been incarcerated since I was 17 years old. The murder that and robbery that I did not commit. At night, everybody else was sleeping except my mother when I came through. And I just, you know, acknowledged you for a brief minute. I went to bed, I went to sleep, and I know I was asleep all week into the next morning. December 15th, 1994, they came to arrest me for the murder, and that was the last time that I was a free man. Around about 5 o'clock in the morning, my mom gave me a call, and she was like real upset and said that they had locked him up. I believe that the scientific evidence cast all kinds of doubt into the testimony and credibility of Mark and Jack Harris. The way how they said that I was next to the car, uh, grabbed the keys, went in there, grabbed the keys out, threw the keys in, and then somehow shot. And the individual found the keys and put the keys back in the ignition to start off, uh, or start the car up and then leave, or, you know, drive off. I just don't see that as scientifically possible. Jack, initially, the detectives came, you know, knocked on his door. He asked, did he know anything? And, you know, they asked him, did he know anything? And he said, no. And the detectives came back and said, hey, you know, basically, you know, you, you know, you lie. Your son was out there. There's something you're not telling us. So he then switched up and say, all right, he seen me and all this from his window screen. So it just didn't, all didn't add up at all. You know, when his son's name comes up, he changed, and, you know, coerced his testimony to, I don't believe, save his son. The police found no hard, concrete evidence linking me to this murder. No DNA, no gun, nothing. And, and I'm, I'm shocked, you know, still shocked to this day that I could be found guilty without a minimal amount of physical evidence. In 2005, we had received deposition testimony in which one of the detectives had said that they had looked for the evidence and the, the vehicle in it, and it was destroyed. At my trial, my second trial, he said that the cops told him what to say. So this is on, this is a testimony under oath. I just lost all faith. One would like to believe that once the truth does come to light, that someone in the system will pay attention, but nobody has. And so nobody cares because he was a young black man who is disposable. And that's the bottom line. When he was in there, he didn't just sit in there. He he learned and taught himself what he needed to learn. He told his mother that he was going to do what he had to do, and that's when he started going to the library, mm -hmm. law library. 
and learning the things he know today. From the day he was incarcerated, from the day they said he was guilty and he wasn't, has been just moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. I mean, the first thing that struck me upon meeting him and also just looking at his background was his accomplishments in prison. He took the initiative to get all these credentials and accolades that he got. He received his GED, he received certifications, he's a CPS worker. That takes some perseverance, that takes work, that takes discipline. He has really helped people in prison. He's been a mentor, he's been a teacher, he's been a friend. He is my, my mentor. He encouraged me. He wanted me to uh, send him my resume because he's going to help me. <laughs> he's going to help me find what it is that I'm good at. Rodney kind of stood out from the rest of the individuals that was in the prison because of his disposition, you know, his, he was friendly, he was outgoing, he was positive, and it struck a chord with me because I knew that he was serving life in prison. He has a daughter who he really never known because she wasn't even born when he left. My name is Cheyenne Ferrante, and I am uh, Rodney Darkson's daughter, only daughter. It's hard, especially when you go through things and you really need a dad. He's missing out on everything. Missed out on his mother's funeral, you know, missed out on his sister's, uh, his, dad. his dad, everything. He missed out on my mom. My mother passed away in, when I was 11. And then after that, my grandmother took care of me. My father's mother, her name was Rhonda Derrickson. Once he got sentenced, I knew her heart was broken. So she fought tooth and nail right along with them. She did a good job. She did. I think she would have lived longer if she didn't have to say, girl, me the way she did, you know? If my dad was here and he was probably home a little bit earlier before she went, I think she would have had a couple years to be here with her son. to see my brother come home because he's been in there so long. I look forward to him coming home so that I can try to, you know, do the best I can to help him as he has done for me for so many years. A thousand percent Rodney Derrickson deserves to come home. Bring Rodney home. Rodney deserves to be home. He is innocent and he's needed. Bring my dad home. Bring Rodney Derrickson home, please. <laughs> Please, please, please bring my Uncle Rodney home, please. Can I scream it up? Yeah. 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 <laughs> please free my brother Rodney Derrickson, please. Bring, bring Rodney, Rodney home. home! Yes, bring Rodney Derrickson home. I appreciate it if y'all do, because I got some work for him to do. <laughs>